Hi, I'm Cody, and today we're going to talk about additive and subtractive transformers. So what does it mean to have an additive or subtractive polarity transformer? Well, to be perfectly honest, there's not a whole lot to it. So let's go over. I've got a transformer sitting over here, and we're going to unpack it. All right, so here's my transformer. And how many of you guys have gone out into the yard, and you had to pick up a transformer, and you notice that sometimes the X1 bushing is on the left over here. And then other times, different transformers, the X1 bushing will be over here on the right. Well, the reason that that flip-flop happens has to do with this right here. So this is a transformer core. And here's my windings. I've got my primary side that just wound around this bobbin and my secondary side obviously wound around that same bobbin. So why does the X1 bushing change positions? It all has to do with how the secondary side is wound around this bobbin compared to the primary side. So let's say that this primary side right here, let's say that I wound it clockwise. So I wound it clockwise around this bobbin. So started here, wound it however many times I wind it around the bobbin, and it ends here. And I wound it in a clockwise direction. Now here's where the additive subtractive thing comes in. If I wind the secondary coils in the same clockwise direction as the primary, it's going to end up being a subtractive transformer, meaning the X1 bushing will be on the same side as my H1 bushing. If I decide to wind my secondary coils counterclockwise compared to my primary, my X1 bushing will end up being on the other side or on the right side. So H1 would be on, on the left, X1 would be on the right. So how do we decide then which transformer is going to be additive or subtractive? Well, it comes down to two pieces of information. We're going to go over them right now. So the two pieces of information that determine whether a transformer is going to be wound subtractively or additively are the primary input of the transformer, meaning the voltage required going through the primary coil, and the KVA rating of that transformer. All transformers that require 8660 volts and above will automatically be subtractive. And also, all transformers 200 KVA and above will automatically be subtractive. In order for a transformer to be wound subtractive, it only has to meet one of these qualifications. So guys, here's a little exercise. If you guys are teaching an apprenticeship class or if you wanna just grab your apprentice, throw them in the truck and show them some stuff. Here's kind of a neat little drill you can go over with them. So over here, I've got my qualifications, right? Transformers that have a primary input requirement of 8660 and above will automatically be subtractive. Transformers that are 200 kVA and above are automatically subtractive. And remember, they only have to meet one of these qualifications to be subtractive. In order for them to be additive, they have to fall underneath both of these. So under 8660 volts and under 200 kVA. So the first one here, we've got 7200 slash 12470Y. That means my transformer requires 7200 volts. It's a 500 kVA transformer. So remember, it only has to meet one of those qualifications. So here, I am under 8660, but I am over the 200 and above kVA requirement. Therefore, this transformer will automatically be subtractive. The next one, here I've got 12470, so primary input 12470. I'm above the 8660, which means I'm automatically going to be a subtractive can, right? because this is only 15 kVA. So it's underneath the 200 kVA requirement. But remember, we only have to meet one of those qualifications to be subtractive. So this transformer, automatically subtractive. Here we have 4,800 volt input, so under 8660. 167 kVA, that's under the 200 kVA requirement. Therefore, that's an additive transformer. Here we've got a 12,000 grounded Y slash 6930. So 6930 is my primary input. Under 200 kVA, right? So 25 kVA transformer. I'm under 8660, 
and I'm under the 200 kVA requirement. So this transformer is automatically an additive. Here, 16,000 volts. So I'm already, I've already met one of my qualifications to be subtractive, right? So I'm over 8660. It's only 10 kVA. So I'm under the 200 kVA requirement, but since I'm over on the voltage, automatically subtractive. Here, 2400 slash 4160 Y, 2400 voltage input, 200 kVA. So I'm under the 8660, but I'm over the KV, I'm right at the KVA requirement, right? 200 KVA and above, automatically subtractive. And lastly, 4160 slash 7200 Y, I've got a 4160 primary input, 75 KVA. So I'm under 8660, I'm under 200 KVA, therefore I'm automatically additive. So what we're going to do right now is something called a polarity test. And the polarity test is going to check whether this transformer is additive or subtractive. And in doing that, we're actually going to figure out why they call these transformers additive or subtractive transformers. So to do a polarity test, what you're going to need is a 120 source. Here I'm just using my outdoor kitchen and I've got just a little power bar coming over here with an on-off switch. From there, I've got an extension cord going on up to some cheaters that I got going into the primary side of this transformer. So remember, 120 into the primary side of the transformer. If we end up doing it wrong or incorrectly and in putting 120 in the secondary side, we're gonna create a very, very high voltage. We're gonna create whatever the primary input of this transformer is out the top side. Probably gonna kill yourself, so you better pay attention. So remember, 120 into the primary side of the transformer. Next, we're going to jump out our H2 bushing to the right secondary bushing. Now, we're ready to do the test. So what we're going to do is energize this transformer. So the transformer's humming. And the first, tech, the first check that we're going to do is going to be to see what exact voltage, and you want a very, very accurate voltage, as to what's going into this transformer. So I'm checking the primary side here. I'm getting 121.3, 121.4, something like that. Next, I'm gonna check between my H1 bushing and my left secondary bushing. And here I'm getting 122.2, .2, so it's higher than my applied voltage. That makes this transformer an additive polarity transformer. If I had checked this voltage between H1 and the left bushing, and it was less than the applied voltage, then it would be a subtractive transformer. So remember, 120 into the primary side, you jump around your H2 and, eight and your right bushing on your secondary side. First check is you're going to check what exact voltage is going into the primary side of this transformer. Next, you're going to check between the H1 bushing and this left bushing. If the voltage is higher than the applied voltage, it's an additive transformer. If this voltage here is lower than the applied voltage, it's a subtractive transformer. So I hope this has cleared up some questions about additive and subtractive polarity transformers. If you guys have any more questions about this, if you have any comments, please leave them below. And uh, like, share, subscribe, and hey, keep learning, man. We'll see you out there.